The following program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a free service of the cable telecommunications industry and your local cable company. Hi, I'm Reese Davis. ESPN proudly presents Sports Figures Commercial Free. This is where science meets sports. Today, women's pro billiard star Jeanette Lee, the Black Widow, reflects on the angles of playing pool with our Marissa Copeland. Oh, hey, you must be the Black Widow. That's right, and you are? Oh, people like to call me 008. Separates the really great pool players from the rest of us is the fabulous bank shots that they make. One way to understand bank shots is just look in the mirror. Okay, guys, you want to get the 12 ball in the corner pocket over there. You're not allowed to play off the eight ball, so you're going to have to bank it off this rail. Okay, check this out. If I aim for the reflection of the 12 ball in the mirror, I should be able to hit it. I think we need to watch that again. I hit the cue ball at the reflection of the 12 ball in the mirror. Watch the cue ball. It looks like it goes straight through the mirror to the 12. What we've been looking at is the principle of reflection. Geometry, Geometry tells, tells us that, that the, the angle, angle of incidence equals, equals the angle, angle of reflection. Let's position Mary and Tamara so they can see each other's eyes in the mirror. We'll mark that point and extend a line from each of their eyes to where they see each other. When looking at reflection problems, we draw what's called the normal line. It forms a right angle to the line of reflection, in this case, the mirror. Okay, now let's label all our points. The point at the mirror we'll call O, and the top of the normal line, N. Mary's eyes are point M, and Tamara's eyes are point T. Check it out. Even though lines MO and TO are different lengths, the angles MON and TON are equal. So what does she know that we don't? Well, that's Jeanette Lee, also known as the Black Widow. She's a gold medalist at the 2001 World Games. She's also been ranked in the top three players in the world for the past 10 years. And she's a member of the Women's Sports Association and the Scoliosis Foundation. And she's going to help us with our kick shot. Oops, nice shot. <laughs> so tell me, Jeanette, do you use the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection all the time in billiards? Absolutely. We work with it every day. It's essential in every single kick shot. Well, look, I don't want you giving any way to trade secrets, but can you explain it to us? Sure. It's not a secret. It's just simple science. If I hit a ball towards the cushion, the path it travels gives us a line. The ball bounces off the cushion, and its new path gives us a second line. Now, if we were to measure the angles formed by the path of the ball, we would find that they are exactly the same on either side of where the ball bounced. We call the angle created by the ball's approach the angle of incidence. We call the angle created by the ball's bounce and the new path the angle of reflection. All it means is an object is going to bounce off of something at the same angle that it hit. So the two paths are symmetrical. 
Don't you love geometry? When we have a shape that can be cut in half and both sides are the same, it's called symmetry. Or we say the objects are symmetrical. Reflections, like in a mirror or off of a billiard table, are always symmetrical. We call that kind of symmetry reflectional symmetry or line symmetry. That means there's a line where we could fold the object in half and both sides would match perfectly. Okay, Jeanette, but there are some limitations to this equal angle thing. Right, it only works off the cushion. If it comes off an object ball, it's a whole nother thing. But with the cushion? With the cushion, if you want it to come off at an equal angle, you have to make sure that you hit it at a reasonable speed and without any English on the cue ball. Oh, English, that's a pool player for spin, right? Right, English changes the way the cue ball comes off the cushion. So in order to avoid that, you have to make sure you hit the cue ball exactly in the center. But don't you guys sometimes use English off the cushions? Definitely. Okay, well, um, for more on English, let's go to the sports figures blackboard and commentator Mitch Lawrence. When you put side spin on a cue ball, it's called English. And English is all about affecting the way a ball is going to rebound off a rail. We've already seen that a ball with no spin will form equal angles of approach and departure. Angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. To put English on the cue ball, the player hits the ball off center, left or right. For the cue ball to reflect at a lesser angle off the rail, you'd hit the cue ball with right English, or what we call reverse English. That spin in this direction, and watch what happens off the rail. If the player wants the ball to reflect at a greater angle, they'll put left English on the ball, or what we call running English. All professionals use English to change the way the cue ball reflects off a rail. For most people, though, it's hard enough judging the angles when you're kicking a ball off a rail with no spin. So remember, start with the basics. To have the cue ball rebound with the exact same angle as it approaches a rail, you have to hit the cue ball dead center, no spin. I'm Mitch Lawrence at the Sports Figures Blackboard. Is it, tell me, Black Widow, do you have a, a personal workout routine that you have to do for this sport? Absolutely. I always make sure that I stretch completely, particularly my triceps and things like that, because yeah. when you're going down to shoot, you get a full extension there and also helps on the break. So I'm, I'm always doing kickbacks and tricep dips and working that out there. You have to do back work you know, strengthen my back on different machines and also crunches and things like that, keeping your stomach real tight. Yeah. But pretty much your stomach, your back, mostly upper body, and the most important things about your legs is not really getting really strong as much as staying very flexible. And then you want to do cardio workouts to build your endurance because if you have to play match after match after match, it's really hard on you. Pretty cool, right? To make bank shots, all you have to do is shoot at the reflection. Yeah, but you're not allowed to use mirrors. True, true, but with the help of some really simple geometry, we can learn how to do it without mirrors. Because the principle of reflection works the same for mirrors as it does for billiard balls, our reflection in the mirror maps out the reflection we want the ball to make. When I hit the cue ball toward the reflected 12 ball, I create two angles. One on the table we'll call angle AOB, and one in the mirror that we'll call angle A1OB1. O is the point where the ball hits the cushion, the vertex of our angle. The cushion is our line of reflection. Let's call that line RC. Now, if we connect points B and B1, our 12 ball and reflected 12 ball, we have created a triangle, and line RC bisects that triangle to create two smaller triangles. Like we saw before, we would ordinarily use N, the normal line for reflection problems, but instead, we'll use line RC. Either one will work. Huh. We could measure our angles to prove that they're equal on either side of the line of reflection. But the beauty of the principle of reflection is it tells us the angles are equal, so we don't have to. We can prove that our two smaller triangles are congruent, equal. Geometry tells us that when a line intersects another line, the vertical angles are equal. Line A, B1 intersects line RC, so the vertical angles AOR and B1OC must be equal. We know angle AOR and angle BOC are equal because of the principle of reflection. Therefore, angle BOC must equal angle B1OC. We also know that each triangle has a right angle, here and here. 
Line OC is shared by both triangles. When you have two equal angles and the side between the angles is equal, the triangles are congruent, equal. That means the reflected ball is an equal distance off the table as our real ball is from the line of reflection, the cushion. Okay, so how can we use that information? You can figure out where the reflected 12 ball would be. Then all you have to do is aim at the reflected 12 ball and hit the real 12 ball. How do we do that? By measuring, just measure the distance from the 12 ball to the cushion and extend that line off the table the same distance. Okay, let's do it. Okay, thanks to geometry, we know that that is where our reflected 12 ball would be. Okay, Patrick, you want to try it out? Uh, you're not a professional billiards player, are you? No. Okay, all Patrick has to do is aim for the reflected 12 ball. All right, don't choke. Awesome! <laughs> are you sure you're not a professional billiards player? Yeah, I'm sure. See, thanks to incidence and reflection, Anybody can make a fancy bank shot. Ooh, very impressive. Well, we can figure out how that one works too. Okay. For a two cushion kick shot, we just add another mirror. So this mirror is reflecting that mirror. So in theory, I should be able to shoot at the reflection of the reflection and I should be able to sink it. That's the theory. Well, there's only one way to test. Okay. Jeanette, you know, I'm using mirrors to make that shot, which is obviously cheating. How do you guys do it? A lot of it is just practice. What you do, what I do, is I imagine that there is a mirror mm -hmm. along the rail, and I picture in my mind, mentally, where that pocket would be. Uh -huh. And a lot of that is, you know, you do it over and over and over again, and after a while it becomes natural that you can see it. Right. And I guess you also have to work just on the mechanics of your swing. Right. right? That's the difficult part. You can see all the angles you want and imagine it, but if you don't hit exactly where you want to hit on the cushion as well as get the speed right, right. It's, it would be very difficult. And then finally, I mean, once you put the time in, wouldn't you say you have to relax and believe that you can do it? Right, you know? exactly. I think that you can put all the practice and all the time into that you want, but once it comes time that you want to beat your husband <laughs> or go out there and kick yeah. someone's butts and, you know, stuff like that, yeah. you've got to think more about how hungry you are to win uh -huh. than how afraid you are to right. lose. And that's so much about confidence, but if you don't have that, you might as well throw all that work out the window. Just believe in yourself. Oh. There's a type of game called three cushion in which the cue ball has to reflect off three of the cushions before it hits the object ball. So the whole game is about reflection. Oh. Okay guys, so what did we learn? The law of reflection. That is that the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. They're symmetrical. Reflectional symmetry is when you could fold something in half and both sides match up perfectly. And we proved it's all true using geometry. Well, that's it. We'd like to thank Jeanette Lee, Mitch Lawrence, Amsterdam Billiards, and our students, Patrick, Michael, Deanna, and Jessica, for helping us out here today on ESPN Sports Figures Reflecting on Billiards. ESPN is proud of the many awards that Sports Figures has received, and we want to thank all the great athletes who have donated their time to help you put your brain in the game. ESPN Sports Figures is presented commercial-free for educators to tape and use in the classroom. For a free teacher's curriculum, to order the Sports Figures series, or if you have questions or comments, visit our website at ESPNSportsFigures.com. You can also call 1-800-565-0452. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Sports, sports Figures, put, put your, your brain, brain in the, in the game. game. The preceding program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a free service of the cable telecommunications industry and your local cable company.